Well, we are back in the shop today. It is a beautiful day in Florida. Just got back from a drift trip. As much as I enjoy going drifting and racing and driving, oh, it feels good to be back in the shop, especially on such a perfect, beautiful day. 70 degrees, clear blue skies. It's a great day. It is an absolutely great day, and we are back to work on arguably my favorite project to date, the K-Swapped Sephiro build. So we've been cruising right along with this thing. We've gotten a lot of fab work done lately, and that is... This is my favorite part of the build. I love doing fab work. So we got the radiator mounted. We got inlets and outlets built onto the radiator. We've got this mid pipe here to help us get back to the back of the head there where our outlet is. We got an expansion tank built to allow us to fill and bleed the cooling system from the highest point because our radiator is super low and has no cap on it. We also built mounts for the intercooler and got it mounted up all nice and solid so next up we're just continuing on with the intercooler we need to build one-off end tanks for it we need to build intercooler piping with quick disconnects we need to build a turbo air inlet um, we've got a bit to do to finish out the intercooler and i'll be honest i'm real excited to do it so i'm gonna stop jibber jabbering on about it and uh get right into it so before we can start coming up with intake designs we need to get our new throttle body on so we got this as we've gotten like almost everything for this build or a lot of the stuff from Toge Factory. So we have this razor blade is dull. Throttle body adapter. Ooh, ooh. And a Grams 72 millimeter throttle body. Now I'll be honest with you guys, part of the reason for this is because it's black. And it'll blend in with the intake. The other reason is the size if i were to use the stock k series one i would have to neck down the uh, piping this will allow me to if i want to while the quick disconnect on here i might just do a silicone coupler just for simplicity if i ever need to swap the throttle body that way i'm not welding on an electric throttle body uh we'll see i've got to decide on that but we got everything we need i believe to toss the old girl on so let's get it on and see how it looks It's funny, I've like, I used to use the impact on everything and I've been using hand tools a lot lately and not because I'm afraid I'm gonna mess it up with the impact. Like I have full faith in my impacting ability to not over tighten stuff, but I don't know. It's just like nice to do things with hand tools sometimes. You feel more connected. It might be silly. Some of you might understand what I'm talking about. All right, we're not gonna torque this down just yet. We're just gonna snug everything up. All right, so something I need to make a decision on before we start building this in tank is what I want to do with this elbow. Uh, definitely a head scratching moment. A lot of fabricating, unless you're just doing like routine stuff, same thing over and over again, uh, is, is head scratching for sure. So anyway, I'm going to scratch my head a little bit longer and decide if I want to cut this shorter or not. And then we'll start building the in tanks, I promise. Well, head scratching has been performed, so we need to break out the CAD and uh, get to work. All right, here's our CAD template. It's gonna be tight on the radiator here. We might have to scallop it there, but otherwise we've got it fitting. We've got it fitting right. So uh, we basically just need to split this part and build it out of aluminum. So the top is one piece because we just need gradual bends. And then the sides are gonna be individual pieces and then we'll weld and weld. I think that's gonna be the best way to build it. So uh, yeah, let's uh, turn this into aluminum.
All right, changing my plan of attack here a little bit. I think I can get both these bins in the bender. The problem is when you have two bins too close together, the one leg will hit the, the die before the bend. But I think since this is three inch and these are two and a half inch, I think we can manage. Now I need to get like construction paper to do this better, but I got boxes. All right, that's it. Worst case, we'll revert back to our original idea and we'll have some scrap aluminum, but I had to, I want to try it. I want to try it. Well, we've got it fitting pretty decent. It gaps a little bit here just because it got a little bound up in the bender because I, I wasn't really able to make these two bends because basically the one side hit as I finished bending the other side. But I think it fits good enough for me. But we do have one thing left to do before we try to tack it on here. Two things. All right, so what we're using is these new Mishimoto quick release clamps. So you've got that and basically, boom. There's an O-ring on each one. We obviously gotta pull this O-ring off before we weld this. We're gonna weld this to there. That'll go like that, that'll go like that. And we'll have this instead of a clamp. And these are designed with this O-ring in here. It allows them to have some flexibility. Right, it's not like a, a dead hard connection. They can float around a little bit to keep things from cracking. So these are super cool. I've wanted to use these on a project for a long time, but I haven't built a turbo car in a long time. So we're finally getting around to it. I also got some new gloves, but I almost don't want to wear them because they're just going to get so dirty. Finally got rod holders. I just need to make a holder for the rod holders. <laughs> I also need to order more thick rod. I got one pound of it. I really should have got all thick rod. 10 pounds of thin rod and decided I don't want to use thin rod pretty much ever. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> I gave Ben five pounds of it because I'm never going to use this. <laughs>
pull the intercooler out for this next part. Also, while you guys were away, my uh, rubber stuff finally came in to uh, finish the radiator and the intercooler out. So we've got rubber between the radiator mount and the frame, we've got rubber between the mount and the radiator, and then we've got these little leather washers here, which have a similar ductility to the rubber between the intercooler and the radiator, and between the intercooler and the core support. So everything's rubber isolated to an extent. Um, it would be better to have it fully isolated, like fully floating on the rubber, but uh, that's a lot more complication. And I've hard mounted a lot of stuff, aluminum stuff, never really had an issue, but I like to put a little rubber where I can, when I can, just to uh, give things a little more flexibility. So anyway, cooler is out. We gotta do this next step with it out of the car. All right, we got everything all tacked together on this side. Pretty happy with how the welds on this guy came out. They obviously look a little bulbous there, but overall relatively consistent and clean. Uh, we got pretty dang good fit up on this considering, <laughs> you know, considering the way we had to bend it and it kind of getting caught in the bender to get that final bit of angle we needed to finish it out. It, it's pretty decent fit up. We've got a pretty much no gap. We got a little bit of a gap back here, but other than that, all the gaps are nice and tight. So I'm excited to weld this out. Enough jibber jabber, let's get to it. All right, in tank, done, and dusted, welded, and weighted. What's another word that would rhyme with welded? I don't know, think on it, let me know. <laughs> I went ahead and put the Mishimoto clamp back on here, just a visual representation. I didn't put the O-ring back in this side because I'm gonna have to take it back off so I don't melt it when I'm welding more. Um, but yeah, anyway, you can just kind of see what it's gonna look like with the clamp and then a pipe will weld in here. Uh, the welds came out pretty decent, I'm pretty happy. The top cap came out good. Uh, the bottom cap, we had a bit of a gap just with everything all said and done. Uh, I'm good with it. I think we can do better on this side, even though this one's going to be a little more elaborate. So I'm excited to uh, toss this back in and start building in tank number two. Let's get to it. I got this piping out because the easy way to do this would be to basically make it the same as that end tank. 
bring the pipe over here, have it U, and come into the intercooler. The way I prefer to do it, the whole goal of this is to keep the piping as short as possible and as simple as possible. Basically build this out, have the quick disconnect here, and have just this super short run. The problem is, I don't know, oh yeah, if I can get two, if I can get that S bend in a short enough time frame. I mean, maybe. Need a complete U bend. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to abandon my original idea. All right, well that took some extreme measures. Just basically this gap bowed. It was actually pretty straight. And then I guess maybe when I had to clamp it, drill in the hole, tack in this, at some point it got bowed. So the sides were flush, the sides were straight, but with one side flush, the other side had like a, a quarter inch, half inch gap. So anyway, use the jack to compress it all. I need a big clamp, but I don't have one. So that, uh, that worked, that worked. So sweet.
All right, well, got this side all tacked up. Got the intercooler test fitted back in here. Looks pretty cool to see it as a complete unit. As you can see, we made this end tank a little bit bigger than this one just because I wanted more room to uh, get all the bins I needed. I am a little conflicted. I really wish I could have done it the way I originally wanted to. I wanted to have it be the end tank be about a half inch here and then angle out to three, three and a half inches here, have this there, and then have a super short pipe to here. The problem is it's too short of a distance to get that bend. We might be able to make it work with some pie cuts, but then getting the pipe in and out, you've got to think this thing stacked up is going to be to about here. So we've got what, five, six inches to get the bend and have a coupler. It just, it's a little too tight. And I'm bummed about that because that was my original plan, but I think this will look good too. It'll better match and it'll be a better flow. The, the air won't be flowing in, hitting a wall and having to go up. It'll just continue out and then gradual bend back to the throttle body. So overall, I'm good with it. Uh, again, fit up on the side, came out really solid. Everything fit together really nicely. We had to uh, massage it a little bit, but fit up is A1. All I've got to do is do my job with the welding. So I'm gonna get it back out, get it cleaned up, weld the old girl out, see what she looks like as a complete intercooler. Alrighty, got that side all welded out. Our Mishimoto clamp, the welds came out really good, except for on the very top, because basically the diameter of this overhung the bend. So we had a pretty big gap here and then it was pretty thin. Um, so that was a, a little bit of a struggle, not bad, but overall happy with it. Uh, all looks good. Let it cool down and we can test fit it back in there for the final time. Well, I see still got a pressure test in all that, but we can at least put it back in and see what it looks like. Fit slash install. Ta-da! Look at that. Little guy. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? Want to say hi to everybody? Says hi. That's a little guy, the local stray. All right, well, the intercooler is officially finished. Little guy's inspected it. He signed off. Um, I'm really happy with how this came out. It's definitely pretty much exactly what I envisioned. Fits in there so nice. I'm so happy with how all of this is coming along. The radiator, the radiator mounting, the hard pipes, the expansion tank. It's just all coming together so nicely, and it's been so fun. It has been such a fun part of the project. I really like this project in general, uh, but the fab work aspects has just been an absolute blast. I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself when I'm out of fab work and I'm not thinking of how I wanna do the next part of the project. I'm gonna go crazy. It's gonna, it's gonna be rough. <laughs> next up's gonna be the intercooler piping. I did wanna knock this out today 
get it all done. So this whole intercooler situation was done and dusted, but I changed my mind. Instead of doing these hard clamps on the throttle body and the turbo, I'm gonna do instead silicone couplers. I just think it'll make things a little bit simpler for installing and removing the pipes, as well as allow the engine to kind of be isolated on its own and give it a little bit more flexibility. So I'm waiting on those because I'm a last minute Larry and I ordered them last minute and kind of a big life event, we uh, we got a puppy. And he's from a rescue, he's definitely lived a rough life, so he's a little timid, he's a little little scared, so I don't wanna leave him inside by himself all day. I wanna help get him acclimated and hang out with him. So we're gonna call it for today on the projects and we'll pick this back up tomorrow and uh, start hammering out the intercooler piping and everything else we have to do. But for now, that's gonna be it. That's all we got. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, goodbye. I'll show you the puppy soon, I promise. He just said he's, uh, he's not ready for his video debut yet. We gotta give him a little more time.